Shalom, shalom. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm from Konoina House of Fire team and under the leadership and guidance of Dr. and Prophetess Lorraine Kuhn, I bring you a message titled The Best Wine. Let us read from Ephesians 5 verse 18 and 19 in the Passion Translation. It says, And don't get drunk with wine which is rebellion. Instead, be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and your hearts will overflow with a joyful song to the Lord Jehovah. Keep speaking to each other with words of Scripture, singing the Psalms with praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. Yes, child of God, it is time for celebration. It is time for us to feast. God has set aside for us the best wine. In John chapter 2, verse 1 to 11, Jesus was found at the wedding with his mother and his disciples, and they ran out of wine. Jesus simply told them to fill the six pots that were there, stone pots with water, and he turned the water into wine. Yes, child of God, you are that pot that Jesus want to fill with wine. The water represents the Spirit of God. God wants to fill us. The stone pots, which is the stone is a, is a symbol of a stone cannot be moved. It is established. So child of God, you that is founded on the word of God, you are established in the word of God. God is saying, I want to fill you now with the best wine. So when Jesus filled those stones, when Jesus turned that water into wine, it was a miracle. As you get filled with the best wine of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is saying, you are going to love. You are going to turn into joy. You will have an eternal joy, an un unstoppable joy. That joy will cause you to do the miraculous. You will do things that people will call you a sign and a wonder. You'll be able to do things you never thought you could do you will get a spontaneous song out of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit will inspire you to come up with a song, to sing a song unto the Lord that you never knew you had inside of you, all because you've been filled to the brim, to the overflow with the joy of the Holy Spirit. You see, in this world, there is a wine that is causing people to get drunk. And that wine is only temporal. That wine leads to rebellion. That wine causes destruction. It brings wasting. It brings violence. That wine causes people to misbehave. Why do people drink? It's because they want to drown their sorrows. It's because there's a void inside, an emptiness that they want to fill. But that wine cannot fill that emptiness. It is only the Holy Spirit that can fill the void inside of you, listener. So, that wine that of the world, it only lasts for a short time. And what? This wine brings results, negative results. The first result it brings is that it causes you to be ignorant. When you are ignorant, you lack knowledge. And the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You will be blinded just because you are drunk. So the, 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 the wine of this world causes ignorance. You won't know certain things because why? You are blinded, you are drunk. So this wine of the world causes people to be double-minded. They cannot make good decisions, but they make foolish decisions. You see... When you are in your right mind, you'll be able to make wise decisions. You'll be able to make decisions that are in line with the word of God. This wine of the world causes people to go deeper and deeper into poverty, spending their monies, wasting it. This wine of the world causes people to become sinful, to go astray. And this causes to immorality, causes somebody to commit immorality, to fight, to kill, and to do things that they never thought they could do. Have you seen a drunk person? That person stumbles, they walk and fall, they get up, they, they fall, they get up, they fall. A drunk person becomes so bold 
that they would do something that they would not normally have done if they were in their normal state, in their natural state. And a drunk person, you find some, they would cry. When they are under the influence of the, the, that alcohol, they, they begin to sing. And funny, what amazes me is they sing songs that are church songs, hymns. You find them singing church songs, hymns from the Bible. They sing psalms. So you see, when you are under the influence of something, it better be a good influence. Because if it's negative, the results are going to be negative. But if we as people of God are influenced by the Holy Spirit, we are going to have an eternal joy. We are going to discover skills, things we never knew we could do. We are going to have knowledge. We'll, have, we'll know things that we wouldn't have known in our natural mind. We will make up, make decisions wisely. We will be able to have the power, ideas to create wealth. We will use our gifts to get wealth. We'll be, we will catch a wake up. When we are influenced by the Holy Spirit, we will be able to be on the right track, led by the Holy Spirit, performing signs and wonders and miracles. We will be so bold that we will do things that people never thought we could do. Even the young ones, they'll be so bold, young people. You'll be so bold when you are led by the Holy Spirit, filled by the Holy Spirit, and you have joy. You'll be able to tell your peers, no, I don't drink. I refuse to be drunk by the world, by the wine of this world. You'll be able to tell them, I don't need to be to drink, to drink wine, the wine of this world or alcohol in order to be accepted by you or to fit in your group. I don't have to. You will be so bold to tell them, even though you may be the only one outsider, you would rather choose to be the majority with God than to try and fit in some way. You see, when I was a young person, I drank too. I drank ciders. I drank wine. There was a void inside of me. I, I belonged to a certain clique. I went clubbing. So I know what drunkenness can do. It can lead you to do things you never thought you could do. So I have the experience. So drunkenness is displeasing to God. You become a rebel. You become a rebel before God. And so God is saying to us, only I can fill the void inside of you, young person. Only I can fill the void inside of you. In Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1, it says, Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. There is no pleasure in getting drunk with the wine of the world. There is no pleasure. You will never be satisfied when you're trying to get joy out of drinking alcohol. You will never, never get the satisfaction. Only the Holy Spirit will give you the satisfaction. Only he brings the joy. In the same chapter in verse Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13, it says here, this is a, it's, it's, it's words that came from King Solomon, who was the richest person on earth and experienced everything on earth. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. So, child of God, fear God, knowing your body is not your own. It is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So, you need to take care of what you do with your body. So, therefore, he says, fear God. If you fear God, you will not be drunk with the wine of this world. So, it is also saying in Psalms 2 verse 4, it is written, He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. God sits in the heavens. He is laughing at the enemy. And as God laughs, the enemy gets confused and he's distressed. So he's saying to us, I want you to join me. Agree with me. Begin to laugh. See the cause for laughter. There's a feast before you. You need to see it and begin to laugh. As you laugh and you join in with me, your enemies will be distressed, they will be confused, and they will be defeated. Yes, laughter is a strategy. So it's time for us, children of God, to be filled with the best wine. Let us be filled and let us get drunk with this wine of the Holy Spirit. And let us be begin to do signs and wonders and miracles for the glory of God. 
Because with this, or with this wine, this joy, the best wine of joy, you can change your own life history. You can change your own situation. You can change your financial situation. You can change it, child of God, by beginning to laugh. Let go of the sorrow. Let go of the stress. Let go of the worry. Let go of, you know, the rejection. Let go of that thing of insecurity. Let go of the performance spirit. You want to perform for people to, to accept you. Let go of all these things. God is saying, come to me. Holy Spirit is saying, come to me. Let me fill you. And as I fill you, you begin to laugh with so much joy that you will laugh away your problems, your troubles. They will be drowned. And so I call you, child of God, to join me and let us laugh. My mother in the Lord one time demonstrated how we should laugh at the enemy. And this is how she demonstrated. She said, laugh at the enemy. Go, ha, 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 ha. So child of God, I call you to join me. Let us laugh at the enemy. As we laugh at him, he will be defeated. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for placing a feast before us. We thank you that we know the truth. We thank you for this time of celebration. We thank you, Lord, that you have the best wine. And this wine, you've set it aside for us. And we, Lord, embrace this best wine. Because this wine turns things into miracles. This best wine, it changes situations. This wine will confuse the enemy of coronavirus as we laugh. The enemy will be so confused as we laugh. He will not know what has hit him. We thank you, Lord, for the strategy of laughter. We thank you that we can celebrate knowing that this joy is eternal. It's not temporary. That we will receive knowledge, download straight from the Spirit of God. Yes, we will know what others don't know. We will be able, Lord, yes, to walk in faith. We will have the power to create wealth. We will know what to do in order to make money, in order to walk in riches and wealth. We will be able, Lord, to be on the right track. We will not be misled. We will stand out in boldness and do things without fear. And we thank you, Lord, for this wine. We bless you. We thank you, Father. We embrace this wine. We receive it. We drink it. We receive it in our spirit, Lord. We say, fill us and let Lord do wonders in our lives. Do wonders that we may have a testimony, that we may bring, that this joy may overflow to the world. So, listener, I pray for you that you will receive joy, that it will overflow into your family, overflow to your children, that this joy, the best wine, that it will overflow to your spouse, to your loved ones, that it will overflow to those you speak to, to those under the sound of your voice, that this best wine will overflow to those you come in contact with, to those who hear you, who see you, that the joy will overflow and overflow to their lives too. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We bless you and give you all glory, all praise and all honor for this feast and the overflowing joy, the best wine ever in Jesus' mighty name that has filled our void and emptiness. We celebrate. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.